What's up everybody? I feel like I've been coming to Dollywood a lot when they're not open and today's no exception. So they are having a media preview for what you can expect when the park reopens on Monday. And so we're here to go check out what sort of precautions are in place. Something to note, this is the first park we're going to that has reopened with a mask policy. So all guests have to have a mask. So we got our mask and we're gonna go in and see what we can expect. So not only did we just get our temperature checked, but they also gave us a wristband because we answered no to questions revolving around COVID-like symptoms that we were not having any, and so they gave us this wristband, meaning you have to answer no, 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 no to every question in order to enter. And they give you this wristband, you have to wear it throughout your stay. So we're gonna walk around and we're going to look at a couple of things. You'll have an opportunity to see a lot of the social distancing, um, protocols that we've set up and you'll get an opportunity to see that firsthand. You experienced one firsthand as you came in. Um, so whether you're work, a working crew or a guest, everybody that comes in will be temperature checked and we'll have a, and we'll have a wristband so that we know that they've been temperature checked and they've answered the health screening questions before they come in. It, we are doing that at the tram stops out in the parking lot so they have an opportunity if there is a situation where someone in their party has a temperature above 100.4 that they don't have to get on a tram, go back to their car uh, and go because uh, they are required, the entire party is required to uh, leave the property if one of the people that they've traveled here with in the same vehicle uh, has a temperature of over 100.4. We'll issue them a rain check so they can come back any other day that they'd like to come back, um, but uh, that's what the protocol is. Why in a theme park that's outside are we required to wear masks? That is the protocol for the theme park business internationally. So Disney, Universal, Cedar Fair, Six Flags, our parks, among lots of others are requiring masks in this phase of reopening. So as we continue and the phases continue to open and social distancing guidelines change, a lot of those things may change. Uh, we're taking that based on information that we get from the CDC, information we get within the industry, information that we get with, from our healthcare partner at Covered in Health, and uh, from the state. We're doing what we can to try to keep folks that come to visit us and our employees as safe as we possibly can. And remember, the mask that you're wearing uh, is not about protecting you, it's about protecting other people. We just got in the park and one of the first things you can see already is a sign referencing six feet away from other guests. I suspect these are gonna be all over the place. Something they just told us, they have removed the turnstile arms. So now, you just scan your pass, and when you're good, you go on in. That way, reduce contact between guests. Washing your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds really is one of the best ways that you can uh, avoid, you know, getting a virus. So we're encouraging that. We've added incremental portable hand sinks on property in each of the zones of our park to allow a greater chance of washing your hands uh, as you're visiting uh, Dollywood. So in case you missed it, one of the things that they said is that they have over 350 hand sanitizer locations throughout the park. So yeah, they're escalating in addition to adding sinks so that you can wash your hands traditionally so that you don't necessarily have to go to a restroom to do so. One of the cool things that's going on when you come to Dollywood for their reopening is the Flower and Food Festival. This is their first year doing it already, just right here at the front entrance. Good first impression. We're gonna get a look at it later, but look, you can already see down there. You got some umbrellas, really cool. I like that effect.
So the umbrellas, there are 600 of them along Show Street here. There was a group from Portugal who was going to come help us put this installation in. They were unable to travel. So our employees learned the process, figured out how to do it and make it work here. And they were able to put everything in. So there, was a, there were a lot of projects like that that our folks had to learn and pick up while they're also getting used to all the other requirements. So a lot of work on their behalf and very proud of what they've been able to do to make this festival look as great as it does. So this right here is Dolly's mother who's sewing the coat of many colors and one of the things that they're telling us is that these came from Montreal and currently the U.S. border between Canada is closed and so they had to get special clearance to get these shipped to the park. Something I think is crazy, look they're still working on it. There's a bunch of people right here playing just to make sure everything is good for when the park reopens. It's crazy, it's so cool. They also have some butterflies back there so yeah they went all out for this event. So if you see here, they got this Coke truck here. One of the things that they're telling us is that they have removed all self-serve drinks and in place, you'll either get bottled drinks or in some editions, canned drinks. And they have not had canned soda on site in a very long time, but you will be able to find it in certain situations here at Dollywood when they cannot offer you a self-serve beverage. We're about to go inside Aunt Granny's and see how their buffet is different this year. In the Tennessee Pledge and the CDC guidelines, they recommend distancing standards of six, six feet in between tables. So this dining room has been reset, you know, for that. You think about a buffet restaurant, a lot of common touches on utensils. And, you know, that's not a, that's not a good idea in this environment. So Granny's is going to be switched over to family style service. You'll be seated at the table and then we'll be bringing you know, dishes only for use at, at your table. When you're walking the midways on property and if you're having your favorite turkey leg or corn dog or munching on your funnel cake as you're getting, you know, to your next attraction, you'll be able to enjoy your food and walk the midways without your mask on. As soon as you're done with your snack, then you'll put your mask back on. Um, the other thing that we mentioned, I think, a little bit at the front gate, Reacting to how hot it is in our masks, even for our host, we realize that the guests are gonna need a break from masks. So we've identified relaxation zones throughout the park property that will be set up with tables and umbrellas to give our guests a chance to just take a break from the mask, but still meet socially distance guidelines. Kids under three are not required to wear a mask. If you're on a high thrill attraction, uh, you're not required to wear a mask or a water attraction. So in case you missed what Pete just said there, it was a reminder that you do not have to wear a mask when you are on a high thrill attraction. For those wondering, do I have to wear a mask when I ride lightning rod or a water ride? The answer is no. Here's a major change you will not be seeing at Dollywood this year is there will not be any indoor shows. They've all been moved outdoors and every other row is closed off so if you're seeing a show this year you might want to get here early because there's definitely limited seating but one thing that they did mention to us is that just because they don't have any indoor shows doesn't mean that those indoor shows have been canceled for the year they will be moved to outdoor venues which i think is pretty cool we're in the queue for rock and roadway and you can see all the different six foot signs that are in place to maintain social distancing and these are going to be in place at every ride in the park. So for instance, they've closed off this middle queue so that they only have the outer edges to keep the social distance because it wouldn't make sense to have all of these lanes open even if they're six feet apart in front of you. Because then what about lateral movement? So they've solved that. So while we're out here in front of Lightning Rod, let's talk about rides. So one of the things that they told us is that they will be sanitizing the ride vehicles throughout the day. It will not be between every single cycle, but it will be a lot more than they used to. You will be required to use some hand sanitizer before you actually ride, and then hand sanitizer will be available for you after you ride. Now, almost every ride here at Dollywood will be open for the 2020 season. The only exceptions are children's playgrounds, 
and lumberjack lifts because of the high touch areas. As for the actual roller coasters, they'll be operating at 50% capacity and actually that goes for just about every ride in the park. The major exceptions are for when you can't social distance on the ride. So say something like Mystery Mine, that might be operating at about 25% capacity and they'll be eliminating the whole single rider thing. So if you're at a park by yourself, you're a group of one. So you might be taking up an entire train on Mystery Mine. So it's crazy to think, but you know, it's, it's one of the things that they talk about. And as we just saw there in Rock and Roadway, they are socially distancing in the actual queue lines. But they do suspect that your actual wait times will be less than they were when they weren't doing this. So even though they'll be loading less people per train on the roller coasters, you'll probably actually be waiting less because they're limiting capacity on the entire park. So this right here is one of the relaxation areas where you're allowed to take off your mask. And there will be signs out here as well as a park team member who will be assigned to each area to discuss and answer questions that guests may have. So that's gonna do it from our Dollywood preview. Uh, overall, I'm very impressed at the measures that they've taken. Something interesting that they mentioned is that there are over 700 changes to the park this year because of all the guidelines that are in place. And that is the most that Dollywood's ever seen in one season. So I think that is absolutely crazy. Something nice though, they gave us a bunch of food, a little goodie bag full of uh, things that they'll be offering during the Flower and Garden Festival. It looks awesome, so I'm excited to check those out. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, Dollywood opens to the park this Monday for season pass holders, and then Wednesday for all guests. So hope you get to make it out to the park this season. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.